Good afternoon guys, my name is Brandon and today we've got a quick woodworking project. What we're going to be building is a leaning shelf desk workstation. I've got a family member that's home with this whole COVID thing and they're trying to look for a space saving workspace and this should do it. So this is what we're building guys, but these aren't the dimensions that I'm using. Now I've been provided with this piece here, this little angled piece and I've been provided with this angle piece here. Uh, she had a shelf that was like this, but she wants to repurpose it into something else. So what it's gonna be is it's gonna be approximately 30 inches off the floor, which is typically a standard type desk height. We're gonna put a shelf on it, and it's gonna have a flip up section to add to the workspace. Uh, she's got a monitor that fits in here that is 21 inches tall, and then we're gonna put another shelf and another shelf. Overall, this is going to be a little over 40 inches wide. So here's one of those two brackets that I'm showing you. So there's going to be a shelf here, another one right here. This one won't be used, and she said that that's fine if that's exposed. This one will have to scarf out because that one is roughly 30 inches above the floor. So this will be where the actual desk work surface is. Here are the two pieces together and I'll show you how I made these marks and how I know where they needed to be. The first thing I did was I found this angle using an angle finder and that's this right here. So now that duplicates that angle everywhere I put it. Then I measured up 30 inches from the bottom and that's going to be the bottom of our work surface right there. So I transferred a mark there and then I just measured the width of this which was just over three inches and put the other mark there. So this little piece that we got to cut out matches that so it'll look the same and then I've just duplicated that onto the other piece. So the next thing we got to do now is scarf this out to match that. So you could scarf this out a number of different ways. You could take a skill saw and set the depth to whatever that depth is and take it out that way. Just keep making multiple passes. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a router and set the depth and then just run it in between these lines. Now, the first thing I want to do is I don't want the wood to blow out and split. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking my angle finder and I'm going to take a nice sharp blade and I'm just going to score this wood so that when I'm going into it with the router that when I come up onto the edge I don't blow out the wood splinters on the part that we want to keep. So we're going to just do that on both pieces and then we can use our router and set the depth and start scarfing it out. You don't got to go very thick into it just just to cut the surface that's it and this is the bit i'm using just a quarter inch call it type bit this router is old guys i've had this router for 20 years or so i bet all my stuff is old i try to take really good care of it and to set the depth i'm just straddling one that's already cut out and loosening up the clamp and just push it down so it touches there it is, and that's the depth we need to be at. Simple. This is where you need to be a little steady. You need to have a steady hand, and you got to be careful when you come up to your line that you don't cross over it. That's the one basic part that can really screw you up. Yeah, I think we did pretty good. All right, here we go again. It's kind of windy, so I'm hoping that it's not affecting the audio quality, but I've got a laminated board here because uh, I want it to look kind of rustic. So I've got one piece that's going to be seven. That's going to be the top shelf. Next one down is nine. We've got to rip them to width first and then we'll cut them to length. And I'm just clamping a straight edge down. And I'm using my cordless saw just because it has the sharpest blade at the moment right now. Uh, so yeah, let's get going. We'll 
So there's my 9 inch shelf and there's my 7 inch shelf. Now we just got to cut them to length. And I'm going to be making these 41 inches long just because it has to fit between a certain space. So that will give us an overall of less than 44 and that's kind of what we're shooting for. So we're going to go 41 and a half, or 41, 41 there and we'll do 41 there. 41 inches will give us about outside to outside, maybe 42 and a half. And it can be between 42 and 44. And just like when we're working with metal guys, always make sure that your wood edge is straight because you can't assume from the factory that it is. And those are. I did a video a while back about what's called speed cutting and I'm going to be doing that here so if you haven't seen that video go ahead and check it out I'll put a link up above it's basically just running a square against your wood and then running your fence against your square and here we go now the bottom shelf is going to be the full width which is 16 inches on this board and we're actually going to add a piece to it to make it a little bit longer like a like a flip up desk So now that we got all the shelves cut, then I went through and cut all of these little side pieces or the sides of the shelf. And this width is the width of this cutout right here. And that's going to be this part right here of the shelves, the sides. So if you guys decide you want to build something like this yourself, obviously you won't have these pieces. So I'll give you the dimensions at least on these so that it looks kind of dimensional to what I'm building. So that's just about two and three quarters. And for width, this measures one inch, so this is going to be what's called here in the United States five quarter board. The overall length from the top to the bottom is just about 77 inches long. And the angle of these notches and the angle on the bottom of the leg is just about seven degrees. I like to keep things pretty simple when I build, so I'm just kind of holding it up there. We're going to mark it out. We'll cut that off. Pretty simple. Now I'm just going to do the same thing that I was doing outside. I'm just going to do speed cutting and cut the line off. I'm just trying to use the minimal amount of tools to do this. So now I'm just going to pair that with that one. So I know that that fits that perfectly. Then we'll move on to the second one and then we'll do our wide third shelf. Then I'll pair this board with this board and do our last one. Now that we got all these pieces cut, it's time to glue on the backs. And I always like to use a wood glue whenever I join wood together, just a little bit better. And I'm also using some inch and three quarter brads as well. Try not to make a huge mess out of it, but I usually do. I'm going to set this shelf aside just because we're, this is the one we're going to add a piece to, and I want to. Put the sides on all as one. So we'll set this aside and we'll finish the other two. So this will be the middle shelf and just like the first one I'm just going to put a little bead of glue on the edge. 
what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like feeling the center with my fingers so I'm like evening this up on the back and this serves a couple purposes not only does this keep stuff from like falling off the shelf but it also strengthens the shelf up because it puts like a spine on it to keep the shelf from bowing One important thing to remember guys when you're working with nail guns is keep your finger out of the range of where the nail could go through because a lot of times what will happen is is that the nail as it's getting driven through will catch like a knot in the material and it'll shoot right out the side of the wood. So let's say for instance I'm going to put a nail, you know, I'm trying to flush up this side. I want this piece flush with that so I'm going to run my finger here to make sure that it's flush. You have a tendency to want to put your nail gun right here and then squeeze the trigger. Don't. Just apply some downwards pressure to hold the board. Slide your finger back out of the range of the nail. Then pull the trigger. I cannot count the number of times I've shot myself in the finger having that happen or someone else shoot, it, uh, shoot me. Uh, you're holding up the wood in this area right here and they just come into it you're expecting them to shoot back here and they actually shoot right where your finger is and it boom it comes right out at your finger so not good pretty painful so I'm gonna do a little demonstration guys so let's say you're nailing this up and you do shoot a nail through the side okay so you nail it for whatever reason it hits a knot or you're not holding the nail gun parallel to the wood the nail shoots out through the side like that and you're like oh you've just spoiled it so this would be a nice example if you were say putting on window trim here's your window casing your window is here and then this is your trim going around and you've just shot your casing onto the window trim but the nail protrudes through how do you fix this how do you make that look better without tearing everything apart well I'm gonna show you and this is the best way that I found of doing it. If you try to drive this nail out this way with a punch, it's going to splinter the front. It's going to blow the front wood out. The head of the nail is going to splinter it. So it's the, this part that's visible is going to be really noticeable. What I do is I'll take a pair of needle nose or even pliers or something and start bending it. And what's going to happen, you see how that just fractured a little bit? what's going to happen is this is going to break off below the surface if you do this enough it's going to break off below the surface of the wood there it is okay so now you're left with this little blemish put a little bit of wood glue right in there just squirt it in like this then just take the back of your nail set and push that down into place and just wipe it up with a, with a towel and then once that dries you can just lightly sand it and you'll never see where that mark was it's just a real good way of fixing it and you haven't destroyed the front of your casing doing it no charge for that tip now let's get back to it so now that we got all our backs cut now we're gonna work on our side pieces so we're gonna put on we'll start with the middle shelf then we'll do the top shelf and then we'll do our uh, bottom shelf last now I have a wood cutting chop saw right here and I could easily use that chop saw to cut all those pieces just like I could have for the backs but I'm trying to use the minimal amount of tools uh, to help you guys out if you want to build something basic like this just like I told you in the very beginning the the area where I use that router you could have actually used a skill saw and just run it up to that line and just keep making multiple passes and then clean up that roughed out area with a chisel. And that's this area right in here. I've just gone in and spray painted that black just so it kind of matches uh, the other areas. But yeah, you could run the saw down through, set the depth, and just keep making multiple passes in this area. And you can actually hold, once you get the first and the last area cut, you can actually cant the saw just a little bit on an angle as you make your passes through and it'll take out a little bit wider swath but that's kind of a little bit of an advanced technique then you can just clean it up with a chisel in between so yeah you don't need high dollar fancy tools and a router or a chop saw to do this and I'm just trying to show you different ways of doing it 
So we will make this nine and a half inches. Check my first cut to make sure that that's straight. And then mark it at nine and a half. Then I'll speed cut it. Then just take a little piece of sandpaper, cuff up the edges, get any of these rough burrs off it. Then I can get the rest when I do my finished sanding. Now I'm going to clip the corners off this so it has like a little chamfered edge. And I'm just going to measure up an inch and a half and make a little mark. That'll be my reference line. That's what's going to stay. And then I'm just going to clip the remaining of that off at a 45. So here's my mark right here. I'm just going to bring my 45 right to that line, make a mark, and that's what I'm going to take off right there. And we'll just transfer that onto this piece. We'll do the same. Measure over an inch and a half. And then clip the corner. When you're working with short pieces of wood, you got to make sure that you clamp it down because it starts getting a little dangerous when the short piece of wood starts skating around on you if it's not held firmly. Especially on a cut like this, you have to manually open up the guard on the blade before you can start cutting. So you just have to be real careful with this type of cut. Now on this, I'm focusing on making sure that the front is nice and flush. If there's any underage or overage, I want it in the back. Alright, so now we've got our top and middle shelf done. I think what we're going to do is try to mock this up, get a few screws in it, and try it out and see how this is going to, uh, see how this is going to work out. So from the front of the vertical leg to the beginning of where we clipped off the corner, I'm going to make it three quarters of an inch. Okay, then I'm just going to use a pilot bit and drill a couple screws in it. It also has a countersink built in. See, that's the best part is it's friction fit. It kind of just holds itself together from the way it's built. So make this one three quarters of an inch like the other. Now we're just doing the same thing to our middle shelf. Now we just got to do the sides for the desk. Look at that. See, shot right out, guys. Had my finger been there lining that up, it would have gone right through it. It doesn't just have to be uh, needle nose pliers either. You can even use side cutters, but the motion is just the same. That's all. You're just going back and forth And there it is and it breaks it off below the surface every time. Yeah, that little trick guys have saved me uh, a bunch of times like I say especially doing uh, window and door trim Because when you're putting on your last piece of trim and you shoot a nail out through it it's it's not like you're going to take it all apart and redo everything. So you got to figure out a way to fix it without causing a whole lot of disturbance. And that has just always worked well over the years. Works better if you're painting because it hides easier. But uh, it also works if you're doing uh, clear metal, uh, clear wood. Put a little wood putty on it. So 
put that in that notch. And this goes in this notch. Oh yeah, what a nice tight fit. got an 8 inch wide shelf. It's going to fold down flat like a drop leaf table and in the use position it's going to go up like this and you'll have a pin to pull out to hold it in place. So the continuous hinge is going to go from approximately here to here. So I've marked it out. Now I'm just going to bring it over to my metal cutting saw and I'm going to cut it out. Now that I got the hinge mounted on the shelf, this is how it'll be sitting when it's not being used and that will flip up. Now I've got to make a way for this leaf to stay up. So the way we're going to do this is I've got a piece of, I don't know, like one by two or something like that. And I've notched it out right here. And that part that I've made that notch on, that's going to go over this hinge. So it's going to be notched to that point right there, as far as how far we're going to go. That'll allow this piece to ride up and down smoothly. There'll be a strap that we got to make out of metal right here, and another one right here. There, now that'll work just like that. So out here, there'll be a little pad that this sets on so that this isn't wobbly. Then this will come down like this and then the leaf will fold down in front of it. So I've got some one by three tubing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into one inch lengths and then I'm going to cut off a quarter of it and you can see how this slides in and out. So basically what I'm going to be building are four brackets that look like this. So this is what we got, four of these. So cutting it off here and then just bending it on each side to make the tab. So now that we've got that end cut off, I'm going to try to bend these ears out. So we'll start by marking it, a length on it, and we'll call it like there. So if anything, we don't want to go too tight because then we won't be able to slide this through. So we got to do it there. And we got to do it there. So I'm going to try to get it red hot right at that line and then just bend it with a pair of ice grips. There we go. It's going to work, guys. As soon as I grab with the uh, as soon as I take the heat away, started, okay? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so now I just got to do three more like that. That's easy. That actually works pretty awesome guys. So this piece will be like attached to you. There'll be another one down here. And this piece just slides through it. And that's what keeps this leaf up. And then when you don't want to use it, you just push it down. And then that'll go down to this point here. And then you just fold the leaf down. Pretty basic. Now we just got to make three more. So I obviously need to keep this measurement from here to here consistent. If I heat this whole thing up cherry red and I start bending it, and it starts bending to this side of the line versus this side, it's obviously going to be too tight 
and this piece is not going to slide in and out of it unless I do some fiddling around with the wood and smooth it up. So what I've done and what I figured out works well is when I'm heating this up I'm keeping all the heat from this side over to this way. So I'm putting all the heat like in this area right here and I'm not really letting any of the concentrated flame that I'm using go beyond this line so that when I bend it hopefully you'll see I'll try to bring it in real close you'll see that it's bending right on this line and not back into here now I'm just gonna keep heating this up until it starts to go cherry red it's getting pretty close right now There it is, and it's getting cherry red from the line towards you. That's pretty red right there. And I'm using MAP gas rather than propane because MAP burns a little bit hotter. It's got a hotter flame, so it works better for doing stuff like this. There we go. So now I'm going to bend it. I'm going to pull the flame off and I'm going to start bending it. I know you probably can't see the line too well but I'm holding the pliers back an eighth of an inch from the line and bending it. Just like that. And that right there is the line. So when I clamped it I held the vice grips back an eighth of an inch from that line and that's the line right there. And here's the side profile. Now. I'll flip it over and I'll do it the same way on the other side. Can you see this getting red guys? I mean, it's not cherry red but it's red. And none of the red is extending into that white line. Eighth inch back. And then I'm bending it. And I'm just eyeballing 90 degrees to get it close. There. I think that's it. Now that I've got all the brackets built, I'm going to install one here and one here. So these ones are going to have like a pull-out force. They're going to want to, the natural force is going to want to rip out of the wood. So for these, I'm going to do uh, four in each bracket. So a hole and a hole, a hole, a hole. Uh, and that will hopefully keep this from pulling out. The back is just a guide. That's all the back does. There's no pressure on those at all. So all we need for those is just one in each uh, tab. So let's get to drilling. And for the screws I'm going to be using number 10 uh, 3 quarter inch screws. I've deburred them with a scotch bright pad on my angle grinder. Then I rubbed them all down with some mineral spirits. Now I'm ready to just put a light coat of black paint on them. So check this out guys, does this make more sense now? So now, this will keep this leaf from falling down and then you just push it back in like that and then the leaf can flip down. I'm loving it. Now we just gotta do the other side.
now that I got both of these on, I just need to come up with a way so that these don't fall out. Now, they can't fall out this way because you see that little notch right there. That hits that hinge, so that keeps those from falling out. But there's nothing to keep this from over traveling and falling out like that. So, simple solution is I've got some large fender washers and I got a couple finishing washers and a couple stainless steel screws. That's stainless also. And we'll just put a fender washer over like that with a finishing washer and a screw and that'll keep that from falling out. And that takes care of that. And it gives you a little gives you a little uh, gription too, little area you can grab onto. Now to take up this little bit of play in here, because obviously I had to notch it around this piano hinge, is all I did is I just took and made a little shim out of a piece of pine. And that'll just fit down in there like that. And then it just, that'll stay permanent onto this. Then when you pull this out, it just ramps up onto it like that, and that keeps this nice and tight. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on it, and then we'll shoot it in with a couple brads, and that'll be plenty. There. That's a nice little tight friction fit. I like that. Now I just got to do this one. And here it is, guys, with those spacers all put in. And, yeah, this thing works pretty slick. So as you pull these up, that takes up the slack, keeps this nice and tight, and then you can just put it down and fold the leaf up and it doesn't protrude into the room. So yeah, I'm real happy how this came out. Let me set it up, I'll show it to you. So check this guys out. I think this looks pretty cool. I don't have a flat wall to lean these up against, but you can see that this black bracket here would be at an angle, and then these would touch up against your wall. So these re the shelves rest against your wall, and this is what it looks like from the front, and this is how you could have it uh, most of the time just like this, you know, so you got a shelf up top and in the middle and then one down bottom But if you want some more space She's gonna have a computer monitor here that almost fills this entire area Just raise this up And pull out the bracket and that's the top. I'll show you what it looks like in the bottom Now you have a nice large work surface And that's what that looks like there. And so then you just pull this out over here. And that supports that side. So that's nice and rugged now. Then I just put a couple holes and countersunk them one like there and there. And because this is going to have a computer monitor and it's going to be used as a desk, I put some down there as well. I'm really happy how this came out and you guys know that I love to reuse stuff and she brought these pieces to me. They were part of a shelf similar to this and I just reused those and incorporated our new design into it. That's all there is to it guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. New videos every Friday. Until next week, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, see ya.